Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation, but a special one. This problem was inspired by another problem that I made a while ago. If I can find the link, I'll share with you. Uh, but that was inspired, uh, that other problem was, had been inspired by an Olympiad problem. I think it was from Russia. Uh, maybe some of you will know. And anyways, um, and I kind of modified the problem a little bit, uh, you know, to make it a little different. So, but the, it's the same idea. And I'll be presenting two methods. So we have 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x is equal to a plus 1. a is a given number, which means uh, we can change a and we'll get a different set of solutions. But suppose a is given as, let's say, 1 half, 2 thirds, square root of 5. Can you find solutions uh, for every scenario? Also, uh, it also tells us that the solution is going to be based upon a. And of course, in these cases where a is kind of like a parameter, which is a given number, we can we may not have solutions all the time. For certain values of a, there may not be any solutions, which can be indicated by the graph of these two functions. One of them uh, being a horizontal line, which uh, because it's a constant for a given value of a, of course, right? Obviously. So, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem in two different ways. And let's start with the first one. So, for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and strictly use the idea uh, behind the solving cubic equations. You can call it the cubic formula. You can call it, you know, Carta Car Cardano's formula, uh, Ter Ferrero's formula, or Tartaglia's formula. It depends on you know, uh, who you look at or the literature t says, you know, different things about it. But m the majority says that Cardano is not Cardano's formula. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's a formula for cubic equations. So we're going to do the following. First, we want to make this an uh, monic equation, which means uh, we want to turn the leading coefficient into one. So let's divide both sides by four. It's going to be our first step. Okay, and that doesn't really change the solution set. And then from here, we're going to get x cubed, and the coefficient of x squared is going to be 3 halves, and coefficient of x will be 3 fourths. And I, I, I'd like to keep the constant on the right-hand side, which is a plus 1 over 4, uh, because in the cubic formula, it's better that way. Of course, you can have other constants uh, when because we're going to make a transformation. So we're going to replace x with something, and I'll tell you how to get that. We want to replace x with, use another variable, t, y, z, doesn't matter, let's use y in this case. Uh, and you're going to basically subtract b divided by 3a. Here b is the coefficient of x squared, and 3a is 3 times the coefficient of uh, x cubed, which is the leading coefficient. In, since it's 1 in this case, you can kind of think about this formula as uh, b over 3, and b is um, negative 3 halves. So you kind of need to divide that by 3. So what is 3 halves divided by 3? That will be 1 half. To keep a long story short, you will replace x with y plus 1 half. And that will do the trick. And the trick is to get rid of the quadratic term. In other words, when we do this replacement, uh, we're going to get an equation uh, with no y squared in it. Make sense? So let's go ahead and do the replacements by plus one half to the third power minus three halves y plus one half squared plus three fourths multiplied by y plus one half. That looks like a really long method, but this solves all cubic problems, all cubic equations, pretty much. Of course, there is an is a casus irreducibilis, something like that. Anyways. I don't know how to read it. It's Latin, but so when you expand all the parentheses and everything, I'm not going to go through this because this is just, you know, time consuming and you can do that, but you should be getting something super duper nice. First of all, notice that from here, you're going to get a Y, right? Uh, with, because it's going to be two AB and uh, you're going to multiply that by three halves, right? Anyways, to keep a long story short, this is going to give you y cubed plus 1 eighth. You're not just going to get rid of y squared. You're also going to get rid of the y, which will give you something super duper simple, which is nice, right? Great. And you can verify this, okay? Now, we're not solving for y, but we do need to find y to find x, right? So let's solve for y first. 
I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 eighth, make a common denominator, and subtract the numerators. And that should give me y cubed equals 2a plus 1 divided by 8. And if I cube the top and the bottom, I can kind of cube root both sides. Did I say cube? I meant cube root. From here, we get y equals the cube root of 2a plus 1 divided by 2. Because the numerator becomes an integer, I just want to write it separately. Make sense? Well, this is not the end goal. Uh, this is y. And you got to remember, x was replaced with y plus 1 half. So depending on this, x would be cube root of 2a plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So we can just add the numerators because we already have a common denominator. And this should be the answer in terms of a. Okay, great. Now, that's it? Yes, for the first method. But we still have the second method, and please let us know which method you like better. Okay? So, the second method is actually the goal for this problem. That's why it's the second method, because I usually save the second method for a more elegant approach, which is not always possible, uh, which most of the time happens with Olympiad level, competition level problems. And this is not a really hard Olympiad problem, because it's like purely algebra. But it's important to recognize these patterns in, because math is about patterns, right? So what is the pattern here? The pattern is we're going to get something nice by multiplying bo both sides by 2 first. And you might be like, why are we multiplying by 2? Let me do it, and then hopefully this will give you an idea. Of course, the right-hand side will be 2a plus 2, right? Okay. You compare this to the first method, and you'll hopefully get an idea. Did you? Okay, let's find out. Now... This expression on the left-hand side is something well-known, should be, if you're dealing with uh, algebra and these kinds of problems, because it's almost a perfect cube. What do I mean by that? If you subtract 1 from both sides, then you'll get a perfect cube, and that's kind of given by these terms. Of course, you have to have everything in the middle, but this is 2x minus 1 quantity cubed. Awesome. Then we can cube root both sides, which is something we've done before, right? Cube root and cube root. And that'll give us 2x minus 1. And by the way, I'm only interested in real solutions. If you want complex solutions, I can tell you how to find them too. But if you add 1 to both sides, you're going to get this. And finally, divide by 2, you'll get the x value. Let's compare this to the first method. Ta-da! The same thing, of course. It should be the same, right? We can't expect to get different solutions from different methods. Actually, if that happens, that would be pretty interesting, or uh, it would be inconsistent, or, um, you know, uh, we probably made a mistake. Now, one of the questions that might arise is, are there always solutions, like for all values of A? What do you think, based upon A, right? Something to think about, uh, and I'll show you a graph and maybe I can answer that question. But if you were looking for complex solutions, you could do the following. Instead of just cube rooting this, you could multiply by the cube roots of 1, both sides, because you could basically write this as follows. So you can kind of write it as this was um, 2a plus 1, right? And this could be multiplied by e to the power 2 pi and i, which is 1 in the complex world. And then when you do the cube roots, you should be getting something like 2x minus 1 equals the cube root of 2a minus 2a plus 1, which is a real valued cube root, right? The real, the real cube root. And then multiply that by e to the power 2 pi and i divide by 3. For n equals 0, you get the real solution. For n equals 1 and 2, you get the complex non-real solutions, which you can get from here. Let me show you the graph, and we'll finish up with that. And ta -da -da -da, here's the cubic function on the left-hand side which you can see with the in blue, and the purple is for the constant y equals a plus 1. And of course, depending on the value of a, you're going to have a solution, different solution, which was given by the uh, solution, but there's always one solution because of this cubic function. Okay? I hope that makes sense. And if you, by the way, if you want to know why this function acts that way is... You can kind of differentiate this, like call this f of x, oops, not f prime, and then differentiate it, and you're going to get the derivative, and so on and so forth. And you can hopefully go from there. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.